You ever heard of this uh, video game Fortnite there, Will? I have. I don't believe you. Um, you ever played it? Once. Once or twice. A couple times, yeah. yeah. Oh, on the show. You played it. We made videos. and you Were you terrible? I don't remember. <laughs> I got a couple kills. Cu couple, okay. Well, uh, they, not, they didn't stop doing it. Mm. Fortnite, it went up and down. Hype and everything else. People are watching right now. They're, they're, they're wondering. They're, Lou, I play it every day. Those people are still. This is a huge community, huge user base. Uh, it's well established. Most popular game that I can remember, recent memory, uh, Battle Royale, the whole package. Ninja. Yes. And what can we say? Fortnite has been crushing it for a long period of time. But with anything that has tremendous amounts of hype, you have to wonder for how long it can sustain it. Uh -huh. And, of course, we have this new developing story here. Uh, Fortnite, the end of Fortnite. Fortnite, it's over, the end. Of course, nobody believes that. But the official line from Epic, the way they were promoting this stream, which, by the way, the most watched stream ever. I don't remember the figures. I had it in front of me. It was something like... Four million, six million people were streaming it concurrently. Four point five million on YouTube, one point five million on Twitch. Okay, another million plus on Twitter. Anyhow, we're talking about seven, seven million plus doing one thing, one event, streaming one feed, which was this final feed, this the the end of Fortnite feed. Mm -hmm. Now the end of Fortnite, it sounds dramatic, and uh, drama's good when you're trying to generate hype. Mm -hmm. People start, oh, the end, what did he say? The end, is it over? Are they really, presumably, it's the end of the previous, not season, but chapter. Because the word now is that they're putting out, it's going to be chapter two, Will. They're going to go up to chapter two. I see. So they had seasons, now we got chapters. And the main takeaway here, the interesting piece for me is how they're using the lack of Fortnite as the attention getter now. That you go to this tremendous degree of hype, and everybody's familiar with it. They're like, okay, yeah, Fortnite. I can play whenever. Big deal. I heard about it. You remove it from people, like a, some sort of a, a addictive material. Yes. And that gets everybody rolling again. My Twitter feed is back on Fortnite. My news feed is back on Fortnite. They found a way back in by taking away. It's like a hard reset. Supply and demand. Mm. You see that, Will? Business. Wow. Will he do? I don't know. Well, I don't know. This, I don't know what this show would be without you. Yeah. Dropping, dropping knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge. I read it from Business One Hundred and One. <laughs> Will's favorite website. Business. Business. Com. <laughs> <laughs> Business. Net. Someone's gonna go check that out now, and it's. Not going to be very exciting. Anyhow, so yeah, they're back in it. They're back in a the game. They've got people's attention. They are the thing. And now people are wondering, when does it come back? Because it went down. So pr right now, you get nothing. You want to load Fortnite? You got nothing. You can't play the game. They just went completely down with it. Now, I was talking to Will about this earlier. As much as w people love the drama and the story and the hype... And that it might just be strictly practical if you are going to do a whole new chapter and you're going to call it a whole new chapter, you're going to need to make some major changes. And it always amazed me along the way with the enormous user base of Fortnite, all the people online at any given time, how, how difficult it would be to be making changes alongside the functionality of the game because mm -hmm. it's an always on type of situation. Maybe they needed to take the game down. For an extended period to make the degree of changes they wanted with the same amount of uh, attention necessary in the w without as much pressure as you would normally have trying to do that while keeping the game online. So it could have started practically and then the, and then they could be they, they could imagine, hey, let's lean into it mm -hmm. even more. Let's take it down because we need to, but then let's make a whole story about it being the end or is it the end it's kind of like how youtubers clickbait stuff with the thumbnail mm -hmm. it's over <laughs> it's, uh, the end is near yeah. uh, i'm done i'm done 
Imagine the title, I'm done. Yeah. Like this, with the head down. Yeah. You're like, I, eh, is, is he done? Who's done? I got to click to find out. Mm -hmm. Fortnite kind of did that by calling it the end, but there's been so many updates since it went down. The site was nothing, then it was something, then there were mini games, then there's cryptic stuff that's been happening, indicating to people what's going to go on. And then recently, I think it might have been this morning, there was a leaked trailer of the next, oh. of the next, uh, not season, of the next chapter, chapter two, season one. And then to me, it just looks like more Fortnite. <laughs> but if you're a Fortnite fan, Maybe you look at this and you're impressed and you're happy and and you you love what you see in this trailer. To me, a non Fortnite player, I've, I mean, I've played Fortnite, but a current currently a non Fortnite player, it looks kind of, uh, it looks like more of the same to me. Right. To a certain degree, of course, you have new skins, you have new themes. There appears to be some big water component, water theme in the trailer that got leaked, which is now just public, Epic doesn't seem to care. They're also talking about new ways to level up. They're talking about new ways to earn V-Bucks. So you know there's going to be changes to the mechanics that people will either love or hate, as happens with any community online. But th this is obviously not the, com the end of Fortnite. No one's throwing that money bucket away. No. It's obviously not the end of Fortnite. It's the end of the previous season, the previous chapter i should say of fortnite it's going to continue going we're going to see some of these new features take place and i want to ask i want to ask the people of the audience the people of the world if you were previously a fortnite user player who fell out and stopped playing is this going to bring you back in now because one thing i noticed is that a lot of fortnite influencers ninja and so forth were saying really positive things they were using this as an opportunity to to fall back in love with the game to say to the communities see how it feels when you don't have it mm. feels now you're hungry again mm -hmm. now you might appreciate it more because you get to have that experience of the thing not being it's like you've got to be hungry to appreciate food yes you see that well rekindling something that was lost <laughs> business.com so there, there's a, th this next thing caught my attention. There's actually a betting line, betting odds out of Vegas for when Fortnite will come back online. Now, these were posted yesterday. They might, have, they might be modified by this point, but you have even money on October 17th. What's today? The 14th. You have 4 to 1 October 18th, 5 to 1 on the 16th, 8 to 1 on the 15th, 10 to 1 on the 14th today. So not great. I mean, you get paid if it came back today and you made that bet. Then if you want a crazy bet, I mean, if you want to throw your money away, 50 to 1, Season 11 will not be released in 2019. That would be an unexpected play by Epic Games. But there's a lot of opinions. People have looked into leaked code that seems to indicate Thursday. Also, it's been mentioned that Fortnite, all, the new seasons always come out on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. So most people are targeting Thursday, which is the 17th. Am I correct? Am I doing the math right there? Yeah, reset day. Re reset day. So the expectation is October 17th, but who knows? Anything can happen. Epic's having fun. They're having fun. You got to give them that. Black holes for for 7 million, 6 million, 7 million concurrent people dominating Twitch and YouTube live streaming. It's got to be fun. It's exciting. You just put a black hole there. It's over. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, you can't play. Not oh, you like a... the game? Oh, you need the game right now? You can't. I'm trying to load it? Yeah. I'm Not kinda, even I'm, a Fortnite fan. This is exciting. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. It's a whole new, it's a new thing. What do you do? I, for me, I'm not even a player, and I kind of, I'm getting itchy. Thinking about the fact that you just can't do it. Mm -hmm. Can't just load it up. Mm -hmm. So, I can imagine if you were a proper addict, Fortnite addict, you might oh, be okay. feeling stressed out right now. Can't load it up. Can't load or up. Maybe the it's the opportunity to try a different game. Yeah. You know, you might I, lose players. It's a possibility, but I don't think so. I, I maybe if you did it frequently, but this is a really the first time they've gone down in a major way. It exposes some of the opportunities that exist when you have a free-to-play game. 
Mm. You couldn't do this. If a person spent $60, $70 on a game, oh, it's oh, it's just offline for a week. <laughs> People can be very upset. Yes. With a free-to-play game subscription, you all of a sudden unlock other weird mechanical gaming components there were people coming at playstation saying what happened to my v bucks they may have invested thousand dollars into v bucks and skins and is it still there right so sony had to come out and put a tweet out saying your stuff is safe uh. and if you have any problems please talk to epic games so it's just really confusing and panicky but it's going to come back fortnite addicts Fortnite junkies can rest easy. It's, you're going to see some next Fortnite season, not season, chapter. Chapter 2, season 1, coming soon. Uh, I'm going to be taking a look at, these, at some iPads coming up on the show on Unbox Therapy because we've got a really interesting keyboard dock thing that just arrived. Don't, no need, you don't have to show them, Will. I'm not. We're going to save it for upstairs. We have a, a, a new, unique type of turning an iPad into a laptop. I'm interested in laptops. I'm curious. I did a, a trial trying to live on an iPad exclusively recently. Uh, but there's been some developments in iPad land because you have the new software now. iPad OS. iPad OS. And there's been some changes Apple is starting to give some software-based functionality to the tablets that don't exist on the phones. They're finally saying, look, the iPad is a different thing. We're going to invest in adding some exclusive features for the iPad as, as a stopgap type of OS in between the iPhone and Mac OS. So give you a little more versatility on what you can do but still within the ecosystem of the mobile OS and the App Store. And so I've been experimenting with it, preparing for that. I've got the, I got both of the iPad Pros over here, the big one and the small one. And one of the features that, that seems interesting to me that I'm excited to try out is, is Sidecar. And I don't know if you've heard about Sidecar, but I want to touch on it a little bit because it seems... It's a really interesting integration, which Apple loves these integrations between their products, finding ways to sell you multiple products that somehow are attached to each other. Mm -hmm. Sidecar is one of these examples. And if you update your laptop to Catalina and your iPad to iPad OS, this is one of the features that you could take advantage of, which is exclusive to this particular combination. What it is, is a native, OS-based way of turning your iPad into a wireless tablet, a secondary display, or a wireless graphics tablet for your Mac, whether it's a MacBook or an iMac. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, there's a market for graphics tablets. Uh, you have screen-based graphics tablets, but you also have ones that are sort of more like a mouse pad graphics yeah. tablet. And... The screen-based ones are incredibly expensive. The Cintiqs? The Cintiqs, really we've, we've looked at them in the past. They're very good, but for a lot of people, they're not going to approach it just because of the cost for a proper Cintiq to draw on the display. They tend to, they can be heavy. There's some setup with software. You may already have an iPad lying around. This is supposedly going to work with desktop-based applications like Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer and Photo, which I've used, Cinema 4D, Final Cut Pro. So now you're leaning back on the couch. I don't know, can you edit with the pen? Even though you got the desktop app and the desktop power. It's very interesting. It's, I think it sort of challenges this idea of how, of what these products actually are. And I like to see features like this. I've got to try it out in practice. Like I said, I've got this thing coming up, some new challenge. I'm going to get back to the iPad, see what happens. But in the meantime, it's, a, it's an interesting discussion. iPads are becoming more like full-fledged full-fledged laptops or systems or computers that line is getting increasingly blurry and now it's also this accessory for your computer it's all very confusing but nonetheless apple sidecar looks pretty interesting oh by the way i should mention shout out to the companies in the past that have done this as third parties oh. because there have been products that have turned your ipad into 
a secondary display, but right. not natively within Apple's OS uh, Luna display. There you go. There's an attachment for that. So it wasn't, it's been done. Apple didn't, other companies had thought of it. Yeah. And Apple has just refined it as, as, as you would if you were Apple. Now, uh, speaking of Apple, you know, they have a very expensive computer coming up. Well, they've got the, uh, the Mac Pro, you know, the cheese grater one with the yes. stand, the expensive stand yep. to go with it. It'll cost you half a million dollars for this, something uh -huh. in that neighborhood, not that much. Uh, maybe, just maybe, you don't want to pay that money, but you're really into the cheese grater design. Maybe you just love that thing. Maybe you have to have that, Will. But you don't want to... You need the budget. Okay. You need, you how, how do I get that? Yeah! That's the right question. You can get a crowdfunded case that gives you the exact Mac Pro look for your Windows computer. That's what you could do. And do your own build in there. Because that's what you get. That's what crowdfunding will do to you. Do for you. It's called the Dune case. And it looks... I mean... It looks exactly like the Mac Pro cheese grater case. There's, there's no difference at all. I don't know if the quality is going to be identical, but it looks exactly like it from the outside. Apparently inside, it's a bit different because they know people are going to do their custom builds. That's the whole point of it. So it'll support motherboards ranging from mini ATX through extended ATX and graphics cards 15 inches long up to GeForce RTX 2080. So you could do a gaming PC, Will, inside of your cheese grater cool. which i know has been something that's been on your list so right. i had to bring this to your attention now this company dune case they did a a, a previous case which kind of looked like the old mac pro case as well uh but this one is apparently even closer to a one-to-one -one type of situation and so the concern right now is that even though this this Kickstarter is going on. Is it Kickstarter or Indiegogo? Kickstarter. It's Kickstarter. Even though this Kickstarter is going on, what about the legalities? <laughs> I smell a lawsuit. Is you smell this, a lawsuit. Uh, is this you smell gonna a lawsuit. happen? Yeah, I smell one too. Is but it on Kickstarter right now? Apparently, it's on Kickstarter right now. I think it's two hundred bucks. The one hundred ninety nine dollar Dune case. Oh, the the one hundred ninety nine was based on the twenty thirteen. Go check what they're charging for this one if you can find it on Kickstarter, Dune Case. Oh, is it down? Wait a second. Wait a second. Dune Pro. Wait a second. Oh, Dune Pro. Wait a second here. Oh, they're maybe they're crowdfunding it on their own website because oh. I've heard this in the past where Kickstarter will steer clear of certain risky products. W weren't we just talking about this recently? I can't remember. Kickstarter was getting sued for crowdfunding a product, which was a knockoff, but I can't remember which one it was. Anyway, Dune Pro. You go to dunecase.com. You can see the Dune Pro. It's pretty, I don't know, pretty nice website. There's a teardown video. You know, it doesn't look exactly the same because the front part of the cheese grater on the Dune, Dune Pro, the cutouts, the dots are a bit smaller, but yeah, it's it looks pretty good. Crafted with pre precision high-grade aluminum, uh, top panel with USB connectors, industry standards, expansion slots, seven PCI slots, five SSD trays, potential for water cooling in there. Hmm. It looks pretty cool. But I guess it's just crowd... But I guess they're just crowdfunding it on their own webpage. Does that sound right? Dune Pro will be available for pre-order on the 21st of October 2019 via Kickstarter. Beta units are available for review. We could get one. We could get one, Will. Hmm. We're, we're a technology publication. Are All we? you have to do is email info at dunecase.com, and we could get this on the show. We could do a Hackintosh before the Mac Pro's even out. There you go. The new one. So, yes. I mean, I don't want to do your job for you, Will, but well, maybe I just did. Yes. <laughs> I'll contact them. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no one can do Will's up. job. If I did, if I had to do Will's job, this business wouldn't even exist. Well, you just did Jack's exhale there. <laughs> you just stole Jack's exhale. Yeah, we're all we're all in it together. How did we, we describe kind of that particular habits. exhale? It's it's 
it's a laugh, but it's also a balloon deflating. Right. Right. It's also kind of a kind of a shot, taking a shot at the guy. Yes. Yeah, that's at least the way Jack likes to use it. Maybe you diff, maybe you're using it differently. No, it's the same. Ja- yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Kind of like, well. "Come on, man. Come on, man." Anyhow, uh Dune case. Yeah, who knows? Maybe we're going to have this this Mac Pro before Apple has this Mac Pro, mm. so long as these guys don't get sued or taken out. I hope they don't. I don't know. It's a different thing. It's for a PC. I was in a Hackintosh game once upon a time, having fun with that oh. stuff. Yeah. Make, making Hackintoshes. They're fun. It was a fun thing, but it was a lot of work. Who knows? I don't even know what that scene is like right now. Could be a cool project. Maybe we'll do it. Yeah. Amazon's new weapon to crush competition, $1 items delivered for free by tomorrow. <laughs> We will pay you. Yeah. Uh, It doesn't even make sense, obviously. It's not supposed to make sense. It's supposed to be shocking, which is why you're going to do it. Amazon now is delivering more goods under $1, such as deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrush, even 75-cent item, Will, that they're going to, under the Prime membership, they're going to deliver it to you tomorrow Hmm. for free. You spend a dollar. Do the math. You're the math guy, Will. Am I, though? It doesn't even make sense. You don't even have to do the math. Uh, they're obviously losing money on this, and they don't care because they're trying to build habits, and and right. they're investing in, in making you dependent if on, on their brand instead of the others. They want to do things that the other companies can't do. And if you're a Walmart, right, or a Target, type of company you rely on people coming in there for those small goods Mm -hmm. that gets them in the store if amazon's getting in here tomorrow right and it's a dollar what are you are you leaving your house ever in your life no no you're not no so there's some criticism people are saying what about the environment this guy's driving around 75 cent packages to individual premises people are also saying it might be is it anti-competitive uh are they gonna wipe everyone out famously what happened with bookstores? Because they were undercutting the cost, but they were just taking the loss because mm-hmm. they could, because they're massive. So there's a, a lot going on here, but it's sort of unprecedented. They have been getting more and more aggressive with this strategy. Previously, it would be the type of thing where you would have an add-on to meet a certain threshold right. to enable the free shipping. Getting rid of that now, people are just going to be clicking away. Mm-hmm. I'll take it. $1, $2. Three dollar, and you got companies like the drug stores and the and the department or whatever Walmart is, super stores and so forth, that are could potentially be in big trouble. Now, the other threat here is that the actual brands that create the goods could be in trouble because of this. And here, I'm gonna break it down for you, Will. Amazon could become such a such an important outlet for you the important outlet because why would anybody shop anywhere else that they could start to flex on you they could say hey colgate Mm. i'm talking down the road yeah obviously not immediately because colgate's all over the place maybe you're smaller company than colgate they could say yeah you want to reach everybody they don't shop anywhere else we want to sell it at this price because that lets us dominate so we want a piece of your margin Mm. and you might be so backed up at that point that Mm. you're just you're stuck. You got to say, okay, Walmart has done this for the record with some of their brands in the past. You got to meet this threshold, this margin, and so forth. If the retailer gets that powerful, they can kind of, to a certain degree, dictate how the brands themselves have to behave to maintain the right status with the powerful retailer. So we never saw a retailer at this level before capable of things like this. One dollar next day, free shipping. Yeah. I mean, there's even competition there where uh, they can make their own products, right? With the Amazon Basics line. Absolutely. You don't want to do it, we'll do it. Yeah. It's it's incredible. They're doing some crazy stuff. Amazon toothpaste. But, uh, think about it now, Will. I mean, you're out there. You're on the internet. Guy like you. Amazon. How are you going to say no? Chicken. How are you going to say no? You know, I, I, I can't. You can't. You just Find say yes. Right now. You yeah. just take it. From Amazon. You take it. Uh, you you you're looking for Q-tips. You're you're Amazon branded. You're you're looking for shaving cream. Yeah. You're looking for a eyelash curler. Yeah. 
How do you say no? Can't. You don't. You, you just you just put it in your cart. Actually, you're already on the one click thing, and you just move on with <laughs> yeah. your life. And it's there, and you wasted no time. It's so hard to say no, and they know that. That's why they do it. Impressive, crazy. Uh, we talked a little bit about the Tesla upcoming Tesla truck, and the thing is, uh, we gave it we we did it dirty. We kind of gave it a bad. <laughs> we picked the funny thumbnail from somebody's render. People don't really know what it's gonna look like. To be clear, so why not pick the funny the funny thumbnail? Mm. But Elon is not happy with the current renders that are out there. Uh, on Twitter, someone tweeted Elon Musk. They said, what do you think of the Tesla pickup drawings that are going around? Some are really bad. Which, the, he, Earl of Frunk Puppy sent that. Ugh. So, at 28 Delay Slater. Um and Elon, he's on Twitter. So he responds and he says, Cybertruck doesn't look like anything I've seen bouncing around the internet. It's closer to an armored personnel carrier from the future. <laughs> what a response. Oh, man. And of course, Elon knows. All you got to do is tweet if you're him. And it'll become a story on InsideEVs.com. And people will get the gist of it. So now we have a new round of potential renders. Mine, my favorite, is is on InsideEVs.com. It's a futuristic-looking truck carrier look, uh, type of thing with a bed and a front bull bar and a single wiper and a huge piece of glass. Uh, so, I mean, I, can, I feel pretty confident that it's going to look cool at this point, at least different. And, I, and to be honest, I'm kind of glad... Not that one, Will. Not that one. Not this one. No. Go to the main page. Go to the main Inside EV page. Go to their home page. It's probably there. It's probably a new, a new story. Uh wait, what? They're back. That's six hours ago. They're back to that render? Bouncing around. It's unbelievable. It's uh it's updated. I got this render right here. That looks like a real military vehicle. Jack, give oh, me. Oh, I see. Do the do the there. Look at that one. See that? There it is, Will. I think you found it. It's at the top of that page. No, still you don't have it. This looks this to me looks more rugged. It looks more military. And and I could see it. I feel like this is the direction a guy like Elon would take take using the descriptive words he's using. I can't speak for certain, but I'm just gonna go ahead and vouch for this one. That's gonna be some not that wow. one. Not this one. <laughs> this one. Nice, nice cuts there, Jack. You're just right on point there. I think it's the first time in the show I've ever turned my laptop around to the display. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure Willie Do will ever forgive me for that moment. No. We'll see. He's still scrolling. He's like, where is this? I have to find Where it. is this story? Uh, okay. Last one for me. This is cool. I think a lot of people are going to like this. Chrome's new feature will stop tabs from eating all your RAM. You got you like that, Will. Yeah. You're a tab man. You got a billion tabs up there. And so do I. So does everyone. Chrome has become the new OS on the laptop. It's just its own OS. Mm -hmm. We have lots of tabs open. It's how you manage all the various tasks you're doing that are web-based, obviously. But the problem with living life like that with all these tabs opened up is they suck on RAM big time. And that's no fun. So... <laughs> There's a new feature that's being tested right now for an upcoming version of Chrome that lets you use your Chrome browser in the similar way, in the way you want to use it. But what it does in the background, Will, is it pauses or freezes the other applications that aren't currently being used. So let's say, for example, if you're like me and you got 10 or 20 tabs open, what will happen sometimes is they'll refresh in the back. They're using up RAM. They have pop-ups or, or autoplay videos or, uh, or ads. Uh, I remember for the longest time the Social Blade website would just be so heavy on your system, constantly spinning in the background mm. if you left the tab open. So, And when you don't really need it to, you just want it to refresh when you go back to it. Right. Or you want to set some amount of time. You want some flexibility there. So that's essentially how this is going to work. Google is testing a new feature for Chrome that lets the browser freeze tabs that have been running in the background, and that will free up memory. 
The new feature, Tab Freeze, works in a similar way and gives you, but gives you even more control over when background tabs are suspended and for how long. It's available to test in Chrome 79 Canary, so that's uh, whatever, beta version, early version of the eventual release. You have multiple settings in there. Default is off. Enabled means unused tabs are frozen after five minutes, which I think is good enough for me. Enabled freeze is no unfreeze, so the tab itself won't unfreeze until you click on it. Enabled freeze unfreezes for 10 seconds every 15 minutes. So there's a lot of options available for you in there, how you see yourself using it. But the ultimate goal here is to free up your memory. There's a lot of different people on a lot of different types of systems. Can't run all these tabs. Need to free up the memory. There's plenty of times I go look at the at the monitor of, of the various apps that are running. It's Activity Monitor on Mac. What's it called on? P oh no, it's Activity Monitor here. Yep. What's it called there? Uh, this is Activity Monitor. That's Activity Monitor. What's it called in Windows? Task Manager. Task Manager. That's right. So I'm in the Task Manager and and I'm I'm looking at how much RAM Chrome is using. It's wild if mm -hmm. you have a bunch of tabs open. Oh, you could bring up your activity monitor right now. And we'll see what Chrome is up to. Chrome's probably all the, all the way at the top there doing all, all your action. But you have to sort it by RAM, not memory. Yeah, go to memory. There you go. Yeah, look at all the Google Chrome. Oh, baby. That's uh, 100 instances and it's up to 400, 500 megabytes. It's crazy. Plenty over 100 megabytes. So... This is not news. Everyone knows this. Anyone who's ever used a web browser and likes to have a bunch of tabs open knows this. This feature could be really popular. It could help you out. You could try it out right now if you want to test out Chrome 79 Canary, or you can wait. Hopefully, the feature rolls out on a commercial release of Chrome yeah. very shortly. So, exciting times. What a time to be alive. Technology, tabs, unlimited tabs, freeze, Tesla, truck, Amazon. They're bringing stuff by the minute business.com